Welcome to another Sunday School Short. Today we're in Jeremiah 26 through 29. Like, subscribe, and share. Hit the bell notification for further devos. Everybody needs a daily devo. Jeremiah 26. Uh, Jeremiah was told by God to go to the courtyard of the temple and give this message. And in verse 3 it says, Perhaps they will listen and turn from their evil ways. Then I'll change my mind about the disaster. I am ready to pour out them, pour out on them because of their sins. It goes on to talk about uh, how they wouldn't listen to God and his prophets that he sent again and again and again as a warning. All the priests and prophets and people listened to what Jeremiah was saying. Uh, when he finished, they shouted, Kill him! Verse 8. Uh, what right do you have to prophesy in the Lord's name that the temple will be destroyed like Shiloh? Then the, the officials of Judah rushed over and held court there. The religious leader said, He, he should die! In verse 11, this seems very similar to the scenario of uh, Jesus and when he was held court with Pilate. Jeremiah went on to say in verse 12, The Lord has sent me to prophesy against this temple and against this city. The Lord gave me every word I have spoken. Uh, if you, and he, he was saying, if you, if you listen, and you'll change, he may change his mind about this coming disaster. Then around 15, it says something a little like this. Um, do with me as you please, but hey, if you kill me, you're killing an innocent man, and that deed will lie upon you and everyone in this city. And the officials uh, answered in 16, does this man, this man doesn't deserve the death sentence, which is the same thing as Pilate said initially. Uh, For he has spoken in the name of the Lord our God. Some wise old men said, remember Micah hey, a few years back? Uh, King Hezekiah didn't kill him. He was saying the same thing. No, they turned from their sinful ways, from their evil ways, and they worshipped. Another prophet, Uriah, around the same time was saying the same thing that Jeremiah was saying. And they tracked him down, and they killed him. But a dude named uh, Ahila, uh, Hilcom stood up for Jeremiah during this court session and presided court. And he was able to persuade the court instead of having Jeremiah thrown over to the mob possibly being stoned that was an easy way to kill people during that 27 and 28 jeremiah 27 and 28 uh again 593 bc right before the fall of jerusalem in 586 the lord tells jeremiah hey make a yoke and fasten it make a wooden yoke fasten it uh around your neck with leather straps and uh send a message to edom moab Ammon, tyre and sidon these were surrounding nations through their ambassadors, they had come to Jerusalem to King Zedekiah, who was the king of Judah at the time. Um, tell them this. Hey, I've made everything everything in the world, everything in the whole earth. I can hand it over to whoever I choose. Now, in verse 6, Now I give your countries to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, who is my servant. That's an interesting term. He's using, just like he used um, the king of Assyria to conquer the northern kingdom in 722 Israel. Now he's using King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon to allow Judah to fall. And it says something like this. Uh, you must serve him. Put your neck under his yoke. If you don't, you will die of war, famine, disease. Okay? If you submit to the king of Babylon, you'll be allowed to stay in your own country and farm your own land. And it goes on to speak uh, the same message to King Zedekiah himself. Tells him to, to listen and don't listen to the false prophets saying that everything's okay. He tells the, the priests, the prophets, and the people the same message. Says that all the temple's gold and articles will be hauled off. Some of them were left. Some of them have already been hauled off. But the remainder of them will be hauled off. Then in verse uh, chapter 28, Jeremiah 28, a different pri- prophet, Hananiah, comes up and confronts Jeremiah. And says, within two years we'll be back. All the stuff will be back in the temple. All the treasuries that were carried off from King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon will be carried off. Well, Jeremiah responds in front of the people, the priests, and the prophets, that only when the predictions, only when his predictions come true, will we really know if it was from the Lord. And Hananiah took off the yoke that was on Jeremiah's neck and broke it into pieces and said to the the prophets and the priests and the people, just like the yoke is broken in two years uh your yoke will be broken from babylon so jeremiah he was pissed and he left the temple uh god says to him hey go back to hananiah and say this you've broken a wooden yoke but i will replace it with an iron one and in verse 15 
The Lord has not sent you, but the people believe your lies. Therefore, you must die. Your life will end this very year. And then two months later, Hananiah dropped dead. 29, Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah is instructed to send a letter to the uh, prophets, priests, and people that are already exiled in Babylon. And in verse 5, it says, Build your homes, plan to stay, plant gardens, and eat the food that they produce. Marry, have children, then find spouses for those so that you can have many grandchildren. Multiply, do not dwindle away. It goes on to say, Work towards peace and prosperity there, for your welfare is determined by its well welfare. Don't listen to the false prophets saying that this is going to end early. Okay, And then verse 10, the Lord says, I will, or you will be in Babylon for 70 years. Then I'll bring you back, uh, back home again. And then verse 11, everybody knows verse 11 somewhat, and it's artwork in people's houses. But this was specific for this letter for these people that were in exile in Babylon. I don't, I don't think God's mad at us for using it, but this is what it was specifically written for. For I know the plans I have for you. He's talking to the people in exile. God's speaking to these people in exile. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. It goes on to talk about how God will restore and bring them back. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Verse four, four, 13. It doesn't say if you look half-heartedly, you will find me. And that's today. We, if we look half-hearted towards God and just give him an hour every Sunday, every Sunday and that's it. Uh, you're not going to find God the way that you can potentially find him if you seek him wholeheartedly moment by moment day through day for those that stayed in jerusalem i will send war famine and disease they're the bad figs i'll scatter them throughout the world and it ends talking about another false prophet uh, shimamiah who rebuked uh, or rebutted Jeremiah's letter, letter at the beginning. In verse 32, none of his descendants will see the good things I have, I will do for my people, for he has incited rebellion against me. Hey, this is just a small glimpse of my Bible study, just a small synopsis. It is a supplement to your daily Devo, not a substitute. Get in God's Word today, the Proverbs, the Psalms, the New Testament. Get ahead of me and Jeremiah. Like, subscribe, and share. God bless you. Have a great day.